If you're looking to buy yourself a WorkSharp, just click on the link marked WorkSharp in the description of this video. Thanks for joining me today. You're awesome. Welcome back, friends. Thank you for joining me today. I'd like to remind you to like, comment, subscribe, and ring the bell so you're notified. If you haven't done any of those things yet, it would be greatly appreciated. And don't forget to share this video to as many people as you possibly can. That's how we get the word out. You folks are instrumental in doing that, so uh, share it on Bookface, would you? And all the other places that you guys go, uh, share the video, take the link, share it out there. That would be awesome. So we're at, uh, let's see, part three of the WorkSharp series. And uh, WorkSharp a few weeks ago sent us some of these uh, uh, sharpeners. They're new for them, and they wanted us to review them and test them out. And uh, I asked them, can I bring them to you uh, so that you can take a look at it while I review it? And they said, absolutely, do that. So today is the angle set knife sharpener. Comes in this cool little package, and on the back, it's got instructions on how to use it. And I'm gonna take it out of the box. We're gonna throw it on the table and get to the specs. It's almost like unboxing an Apple product. Watch this. Ooh. Everything stores up nicely inside the storage container. It's designed to work upright on a bench in this fashion. It comes with a honing rod for your serrations and it stores in here quite nicely. You can select the desired sharpening angle by putting the feet in the appropriate slot. It uses strong magnets to hold everything into place. It's about seven and three quarter inches tall when it's in the open and ready position. The base is about nine and a half inches wide. When all the components are stored and in the container, it weighs in at 14 and three quarter ounces. The storage lid is easily removable for a little extra convenience when using the sharpener. And then it can easily be put back together again. The base has these rubber feet to keep it from sliding around when it's on your workbench. The ceramic rod can be installed up here so that you can sharpen it quite easily without having to hold the whole thing. And for the heck of it, you could even store it on this side. Each arm has a coarse diamond plate, a fine diamond plate, and a ceramic plate. This sharpener is meant to be used dry. There's no water or oil required. It stores quite easily. WorkSharp worked with Ken Onion to design this thing. Hey, we know that guy. Hey friends, we just connected with Sportsman's Warehouse, America's premier outfitter. Why would you want to shop at those other two places? You know where we're talking about. When you can shop in the convenience of your own home, online Ooh. at Sportsman's Warehouse. That's Anything from shoes, clothing, fishing, boating, archery, hunting, firearms, camping, and grilling. They call it outdoor cooking. Just use our link down below. It doesn't cost you a penny more, and you'll be helping out the TSG channel when you shop at the Sportsman's Warehouse, America's premier outfitter. We've got the uh, WorkSharp bench angle set knife sharpener set up on my workbench because that's what it's called and uh, I've got two knives I'm gonna take a um, kitchen knife that I've got here that always needs sharpening and uh, the cool thing about this particular sharpener is it has three different angles for kitchen EDC and outdoor so I thought mm, we'll do the kitchen plus it also has the ability to do serrations with this serration uh, hone stick thing and so I brought out my uh, buck selector knife because it's got a uh, out of the two blades and this is a two blade kind of a thing uh, one of them is serrated so we'll give that a sharpen and do a little demo with that so let's uh, take a look down here and see what we got oh by the way of reminder don't forget to like comment subscribe and ring the bell and share this video so that everyone that you know will know about these sharpeners and I've got two other sharpener videos that we did a couple weeks back. Uh, I'll put links to all that below. Take a look at those. Pass them on to your friends. All right. All right. So uh, we're going to start off with the kitchen knife. Let's get this a little bit out of the way. Uh, we'll look at the instructions. 
kitchen is 15 degrees and I've got it set on the innermost posts which is 15 degrees and it's very simple you know you can go out here and now you're at 20 degrees and out here you're at 25 degrees for the uh, various uh, edges that you would want to put on your various tools or knives but I'm gonna put it at 15 now you're wondering how do I know that it's 15 and what's the reference point well straight up and down vertical is the reference point. I'm going to pull this serration tool out of here for just a moment. Uh, so straight up and down. So this blade is reasonably sharp. Hang on, let me find some uh, paper. There you go. Is that bright enough for you? <laughs> All right. Let's see how we uh, cut here. Uh, it's just junk. Okay. There you go. Will not cut. Well, it's tearing more than cutting. Yeah, it's just tearing. So it won't cut tomatoes, and I love to cut tomatoes very, very thin. So this is going to come in handy. Um, you know what I might do? I'm going to switch the orientation around of this thing so you can actually see how it looks straight up and down. Use our Amazon link down below. When you do, it helps us out, and it doesn't cost you a penny more. And after using the link, Save it to your bookmarks so you can have easy access to it in the future. Thank you. Alrighty. Now, I'm going to admit, getting this thing set up, it's not going to be as simple as, uh, say, the other two devices that we looked at in the last couple of weeks. Uh, this is going to be for someone who is... Uh, very serious about their knife sharpening. That's not to say you're not serious if you have one of these. Uh, these are designed to be very, very portable and to be used, um, you know, as a uh, field outdoor uh, sharpening tool. This is definitely for in the workshop when you are carefully crafting a uh, an edge on your blades. All right, so I'll just kind of leave it at that. How do we know? This is 17 degrees. Well, if I hold the knife, you know, perpendicular to the tabletop, right? It's uh, straight up and down. It's not cockeyed like this or like this. Can you see the difference there? It's straight up and down. Uh, I'm going to go with the course first on this side. And I'm going to hold on. And I'm going to draw back while I push down. And I'm putting a 17 degree angle on this blade. Because this is 17 degrees of perpendicular to the workbench, right? Does that make sense? I think so. And I'm going to inspect if there's a wire. Uh, I'm not getting one quite yet. So, just so you see what I'm doing, I am drawing straight down and back, okay? Just like that. Let's put this back here. Huh. The chickens hear the knife uh, getting sharpened and they think it's for them. <laughs> no, they give me eggs. All right, and then you just go to the other side. I'll do the same thing here. Hold on. Actually, I'll do it with my left hand. I'm not left hand dominant, but it works pretty good. Oh, yeah, well, it is, uh, without a doubt, it's taking off material. Oops. I guess I can't hold it this way, otherwise I'd be cutting into myself, so be very careful, okay? Straight up and down with the blade, perpendicular to your workbench. Alrighty. And there's a little bit of a burr. I do feel it. That's a good sign. All right. So then this is coarse. 
I'm going to give it a turn until the smooth, uh, the uh, less coarse or the fine diamond blade, <laughs> diamond blade, listen to me, the diamond uh, surface is there. And I'll continue going. And if those chickens don't stop, I just might use this knife on them for dinner tonight. No, I'm not going to. Check for a burr. Oh, yeah, burr. Nice. Okay. Again, take your time. We're not in a hurry here. Now, what's the difference between this and, say, you know, this Ken Onion version? Well, this one takes electricity. This one just takes the uh, Armstrong method. <laughs> no electricity required. Let's finish this up. Keep in mind, I'm doing this left-handed, and I'm not left-hand dominant, but if I can do it, I have a feeling you can too. Whoops. There you go. Actually, I got better at it left-handed than I am right-handed. Okay. Yeah, there's a burr. All right, so give it another turn. Give it another turn. And now we have the ceramic sides. Uh, exposed. So let's give that a go. And the last, I got a burr on this side, so I'm going to hone it over here. Let's do it with the left hand. Straight up and down. And draw it down and towards me. That's just to guarantee that I'm getting that 17 degree angle. All right, let me grab a piece of paper, try to see if we can cut some paper with this thing. All right, just so happen to have some. Hmm, uh, not very, uh, it's not happening. Huh. I must be doing something wrong. Yeah. Oh, well, oh, no, no, there you go. I just, uh, that's right. It's 17 degrees, so it's going to be not quite this way. It's going to be more up and down. Plus, it's a, a very thin blade. Ah, uh, tore. Well, I'm getting an edge, and it's not tearing as bad as it was. Let's, um, let's go to the fine diamond surface and work at that a little bit more, shall we? Again, take your time. <laughs> You're probably all wondering out there, how come I just don't pick this thing up and use it manually without the base? You know, I could. And uh, I just might do that. Yeah, okay, well, definitely getting a burr. You want that little curl, if you understand what I mean, you know, when you sharpen one edge, yeah, there's a burr on this side. The, the, the metal curves when you're sharpening on this side, and it curves this way, and it leaves a little burr that you can feel over here, and you gotta knock that burr off in order for it to be uh, effective. I'm being a little more careful, and I'm using my right hand. So I don't end up chopping my fingers off. Yeah, I can definitely feel the ceramics smoothing out that blade. This side's nice and smooth. It's got a little, little notch in it. That does right there. It catches right there. Taking my time. All right. Let's see how we do. 
Yeah, I'm having difficulty. Got to be honest with you. Okay, well, I got some cutting action going on there, but it's it's taking me some time. Hmm. Let's try this. How do I know if this is 17 degrees? I don't. Except. You know what? When I hone it, I wonder if I need to be at 20 degrees. Huh. Uh-oh. I may have been just doing this wrong. You know what, folks? Got to read the instructions. All right. So, um, do you do that? Rotate, rotate, rods, ceramic, fine, ten. No, doesn't say to. Okay. I am going to just take it. Ooh, don't cut your finger. All right, let's see how we do. A little better, yeah. All right, guys, I think I just need to stay at it. I'm gonna put it on 17. Let me stay at this for a few strokes, okay? We'll be right back. Moments later. I'm having a hard time, folks. Hmm. Tell you what, let me try something. I'm gonna set this aside. I'm gonna grab the uh, the uh, pivoting sharpener and I'm gonna drag it through here a few times and see what happens. Boy, that didn't sound good. Now keep in mind, I just may not be as adept at using a tool, you know, like this. I'm having a hard time. I'm just gonna be honest. Guys, it works sharp. If I'm messing up, would you let me know? Okay. Look at that. Okay, so I actually was able to do much better with the pivoting sharpener um, than with the uh, bench sharpener. That's probably because technique. I have yet to get the technique down. This guy. Okay, I can make some cuts. I'm running out of smooth area. See, I can get some cuts in there. Okay, well, I'm gonna give you an honest assessment of this thing. Yeah, so the uh, it just didn't work very well, at least in my case. Now, I'm probably doing something wrong. I read the instructions. Maybe I just don't get it. Uh, it's kind of a cool thing. It looks cool. The concept is cool. Uh, I gotta be honest with you, going into it, I figured, you know, trying to keep this angle like this, that was gonna be a tough one for me in the way that I work. Um, it might be easier just to take the thing and, you know, go at it like this, which is, you know, the age old method of doing it. Uh, I'm gonna get a hold of WorkSharp. And uh, guys, if you're, WorkSharp guys, if you're watching this, uh, I'm gonna give you a shout out. Give me a shout too. Uh, yeah, it's, I'm having a difficult time, guys. And tell me if I'm doing something wrong. I'm gonna not even talk about the, uh, the honing rod. It should work fine, frankly. You know, you take it and, uh, you know, do this, right? It should work fine. I can't see this not working. And then the little ones, you go there. 
and then you give it a swipe across the back just like that. So I can't see this not working. All right, so that's all I've got for you today. Um, these other two items, I'll put links below. You can see the reviews on these. Uh, very good. You know, this was a 10. This was probably a nine, eight and a half to a nine. So I would highly recommend it. The price point is good. Puts an edge on when you need it. It's very portable, very usable out in the field as an outdoor sharpener. This takes a little bit more skill, a little more work. Um, I want to like it, but I don't think I would use it a whole lot. Let me talk to WorkSharp. I'll get back with you. All right. Don't forget, like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell, share this video. Let folks know about WorkSharp that may not know about it. Um, they do make great products. And uh, even though some of them may be a little bit difficult to use, I'll figure it out. We'll get it worked out. All right. We'll see you next time. I'll bring you an update. All right. God bless you. God bless America. May America bless God. Is easily removable for ease. Oh, yeah. Well, easy for you to say. <laughs>